Good day and thank you for joining us. So in today's lesson what we'll be looking at is some financial maths, particularly simple and compound interest. Okay, so before we get into anything like simple and compound interest, let's first get used to certain terminologies that we'll use when dealing with financial math. So our different points in our equations, um, our different letters or our representatives is going to be certain things like A, okay? So A is going to be what we call our future value. So our future value in equations will be represented by the, little, the letter A, capital A. Then if we look at P, this will represent our original amount. So what's going to happen in simple and compound interest is you're going to see a lot of investments happening, okay? That's, that's mainly what simple and compound interest is based off of. So when we're dealing with investments, this original amount is the amount of money that we will invest. And this A over here, which is our future value, is how much money we've made after our investment is complete after a certain amount of time. Cool. So then we move on to our N. Our N is going to be our time in years. So our N is always going to be in years, okay? So if they give us something like, Fit, um, invested for 36 months, we'll have to change that to years and you know, 36 months is 3 years. So N is going to be 3 years in that case. Moving on, we have the letter R. So this is going to be interest, interest rate per annum. Cool. So interest rate per annum, what per annum basically means is Per year so this will be your interest rate per year and then we have our I over here which just basically represents a fraction form of our interest rate okay so our interest rate is always going to come in a percentage okay so what we have to do with that percentage is change it into a fraction so it can work in in an equation and so that's how we do it here we put it in the form of I, which is our interest rate over 100. And then just a last term of here. In all of the examples, you'll see something like this, PA, which is basically per annum. So when you see PA in your, in your questions, you know that that is per annum. So before we move on to any equations, um, any simple and compound interest equations, just a basic principle that I want you to get is working out the amount of interest, okay? So this is just base level, working out the amount of interest that give you a future and a original amount, a future value and original amount. The way you'll work out interest is by saying the future value minus the original amount, which is P, okay? So that's just working out the amount of interest that is earned. So you'll take the money at the end of investment and the original amount that was invested and you'll minus them and that will give you your total interest so moving on now we can see we're going to start off with simple interest so there are two different equations we could use for simple interest so the first one being this over here let me just think what color I can use quickly let's use um, let's stick with the blue. So we're going to have SI. So SI stands for simple interest is equal to P. Now if we go back, we know that P is our original amount that we invested. So that's P times R times N all over 100 okay so just to explain how we get this equation initially the equation would be written as s si is equal to p i n so that's p times i times n but remember i is equal to r over 100 right so i is equal to r over 100 that's how we get s i is equal to p r n over 100 okay so the over 100 just goes underneath all of our terms, right? So this is how we get us 
this, but this equation is only going to work out the amount of interest, okay? So what, what I basically mean is if they're asking us to work out how much interest is, I mean, how much your final value is going to be, you'd need to add this answer onto your original amount to get your final value. But let's say we want to work out our future value immediately. If we want to work out a future value immediately, which I would prefer because it just goes a lot quicker, we'd say A is equal to P1 plus I times M. Okay, so this is going to be our simple interest formula that we'd use to work out the future value. So, just to remember, this equation over here works out the amount of interest and this equation over here works out our simple interest which is well not our simple interest it works out our future value cool so amount of interest future value so now that we got that out of the way say if they are asking us to work out monthly installments as well so now this is all just basic different things questions they could throw at us so we've already found out how to work out the amount of interest then the future value if they're asking us to work out monthly payments okay that will be so we'll just say monthly payments that will be equal to a which is our future value over time in months plus insurance which they will give to us if they need us to work it out okay so anyways moving on from this so now we have our equations these are the two main equations i want you to focus on over here these are the most important ones working out the amount of interest and just working out future values straight away. So now if we're moving on to an example, we can see that ask us, so this is simple interest example, remember SI, simple interest. So it says, calculate the final amount if 250 Rand is invested for three years at 8% per annum simple interest. Okay, so what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to write down all the information that we have, okay? So, what we're going to try and work out is our future value, right? Our final amount, which is going to be our future value. So, A is unknown. So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to write down the information that's given to us and what we don't know. So, what we don't know is A. What we do know is our initial amount that we invested, which is 250 Rand. Let me just write the R in. Um... Then what we need to write down is also all the other information also. So what that's going to be is N, which is going to be our amount of years, which they say is three years. Then R, which is our rate per annum, but we're going to put it as I actually. Okay. So we have I, which is equal to R of 100. So R is our percentage, remember? So they gave us that percent over there. 8% per annum. So we know that it's going to be per year. So we can just say. 8 over 100 okay so if I'm not mistaken now we have all the different pieces that we need for our equation so what equation we're we using the simple interest equation for future value so we'll say a is equal to p 1 plus i times n cool remember i is equal to r over 100 which we have over here right so now we can put plug in all of our different things. So we don't have A, we're trying to work that out. So now we substitute in P next. So P is 250. One plus. So our I is eight of 100. Oops, sorry. That's going to be times n, which is 3. After working it out, you should get to a final answer of 310 
RAN. Don't forget your units of RANs. That is very important when we're de dealing with financial math. Okay. So all we did here now was plug in the values into our equation and that gave us our future value of 310 rand. So that is the final amount invest investing 250 rand for three years at 8% per annum simple interest. It was that simple, okay? Now let's see what happened if we use the other equation, okay? This is just gonna basically show you guys why I say it's better to use this equation. So SI is equal to P R N. These are all times by each other over 100. So once you work this out, you get 250, which is our P times our R, which is 8 times 3. Let's put in the time sign over 100. And once you work that out, you'll get a final answer of 60 Rand, right? So that's only the amount of interest that you make. So what you then have to do is you have to say A, which is your final amount, is equal to 250 plus 60. So you have to add on that interest that you worked out. And then you get the final answer of 310 Rand. So you still get the same answer. It's just there's an extra step in this method. So that's why I'd prefer you just use the simple interest um, equation if they're asking you to work out final amount. Cool. Moving on. We now get to compound interest. Okay. So just quickly to introduce it, compound interest, the equation is just going to be we're using the exact same terminology, working out final amount is equal to original amount, which is P. And then we say one plus I close bracket to the power of N. So you can see the difference in here. We're not timesing N inside the brackets anymore. We are putting the brackets to the power of N. Okay, so that is just basically the equation. So straight away, we can just move on to our example. Okay, just try and keep that equation in mind when we move on now. So we have our question over here. It says, Jan invests 250 Rand for three years at 8% per annum compound interest. So if you saw in the previous example with simple interest, they said simple interest, okay? Per annum, simple interest. But now they're saying compound interest. So that's gonna, are you gonna identify whether you're using compound or simple interest, okay? So our key points, invest 250 Rand. So obviously our original amount for three years. So we know how many years it is and 8% per annum. So we know our I as well, which is gonna be eight of 100 once again. So we'll just plug in our values over here that we know. So A, we don't know. P, we know is 250 Rand. We know that our N is three years. We know our I is eight over 100. Just remember I is R of 100 and our R is equal to 8%. Cool. So now we have all of the values we need. So what does the first question ask us? What is the value of his investment after three years? So that is telling us to work out our final amount, right? The key words in there was what is the value and after three years, okay? After three years, obviously, that is going to be our final amount. So we'll say now A is equal to P 1 plus I to the power of N, okay? Close bracket to the power of N. So now we're going to substitute in our values. So we go 250, one plus I, which we found to be eight over 100 to the power of N, which is three. So once we work out all of that, you should get to a final answer of 314 comma nine three. So this is your final, your future value after working out compound interest okay and you'll see the reason why I use the same values for both of these examples so you can see the difference so if you use the simple simple interest equation you're going to get a completely different answer to if you use the compound interest equation that's why it is very important for us to identify which equation they want us to use okay so that was 2.1 done over there so now we can move on to 2.2 
2.2, they ask us how much interest did his investment earn in three years. Now, if you can remember, let's go back to the first slide that I had for you guys. Sorry. It says here interest, okay? So they want us to know that interest. We have to say future value minus original amount, okay? So if we just go back to that, working out few, our interest earned in three years, we're going to say, so interest is equal to A minus P. So our future value minus our original value. So once we do that, we're going to have 314,93 minus 250. These are both rand. So our interest is going to be a total of 64,93. So just before I end of the lesson, I just want to show you guys. Um, so you can see before when we worked that interest with simple interest, we got 60 rand, right? Sorry. Working out um, simple interest, we got 60 rand as our interest, right? Just showing you guys the difference between the two. When we worked it out with compound interest, our interest was 64 rand 93 cents. Okay, sorry, I just need to put in the rand. So that are the clear that is the clear differences between our simple and compound interests. We can see we get completely different answers. So, anyways, that is going to be the end of the video lesson. Thank you very much for tuning in. Hopefully, you took a lot from this lesson.